Go and tell somebody else. I'm sure it is. So people would tell somebody else what you said. You didn't say any of that. And then you would like have to come together and speak for yourself. But everybody had an opinion of you and what you said and what you did and what it meant. And then at some point you would speak for yourself. A lot of times because we were in high school and we were dumb and we were guys, we would speak by beating each other up. And then afterwards we'd sort it out and just, oh, we're friends anyway. You know? Um, <laughs> and we'd get our frustration out that way. But listen, God came and spoke for himself. Okay, so we can all sit around with all of our opinions about what we think about God. But in the day, we don't acknowledge that God came in the middle of all of our opinions and spoke for himself. He did it in the person of Jesus. It actually says that when Jesus came, John, one of the most seen and insightful and revelatory apostles that there was, said no one has known God but the Son. He's the only one who's been in his heart. He has specifically come to reveal him to all of you so you could see all the facets of God and all the different ways God reacts in all the different situations. So you would no longer have just been like Job where you'd heard about God but didn't know him, where you could see him clearly. So Jesus is God walking around in the earth for 33 something years. Now how many people do you see Jesus kill? How many people do you see sin kill? A whole lot. So we see death even around when Jesus comes, but we see he wasn't the author of it. So we see there is death there, but we see he isn't the author of the death that's there. So we see death in the Old Testament, and we see God also in the Old Testament. But if we don't see Jesus as the author of the death in the New Testament, then that tells us God wasn't the author of the death in the Old Testament. It tells us sin was. Right? So Jesus comes and he reveals the truth about God. And he reveals God as the healer from sin. He reveals God as the Savior. Jesus even said, the Father sent me. He said, I didn't come to condemn. I came to save. So He never comes to condemn. He can only come to save. The thing that condemns people is sin and death, not God. Now in the day they don't believe on God, that's the only way they can be saved from sin and death. It's like the funny example you were saying about the guy in the helicopter. Right? No, no. I'm waiting for God to save me. Right. Yeah. right? Listen, if I'm drowning in the, in the water in the ocean and there's a boat there and the only thing they have to save me is a life jacket listen in the day I reject the life jacket who condemned me the people in the boat no. or me me right well see how that works with God God's not the one who brought death he told us what would bring death we thought it was the good way we took it into ourselves it killed us Adam was dying and dead in sin before God came and found him and then what did God do God clothed him God didn't kill him and so in the day God comes to save us from sin and death, the thing that's killing us, and we reject his free offer of salvation and life, we can't now blame God for the people that end up condemned to death. Right. It's the sin that condemned them to death, not God. Right. Because there's only one way to have life. It's God giving it to you as a gift. Well, if you say, I don't want your life, how are you going to be able to live? <laughs> there's only one life. Right. Well, if you reject the one life, you're going to end up dead. Now, who killed you? The life? No. No. Do you see how that works? Yes. And it, it's, man, that's another thing that the early church, that the apostles would just be beside themselves with. How are we going to, what did Jesus say when they accused him of casting out the devils by the power of the devil? A house divided. He said, a house divided against itself can't stand. I can't be the one who gives the demon and the one who casts out the demon. Do you guys see how that's like a, just a, a, a truth there? A house divided against itself can't stand. So if God's the one who kills and the one who gives life, that's a house divided against itself and it can't stand. Right? Why won't that house be able to stand? Because it's not on a sure foundation. Guess what? People will struggle to come into a house that isn't on a sure foundation. If you guys come to my house and you see that thing like waving back and forth and it looks like <laughs> part of it's about to like fall off the edge into like some mudslide, you guys ain't coming in. Right? And listen, even if you... Me and my wife live in my house. Let's say you come to my house and you see the house is divided against itself in the sense that you hear me and my wife yelling at each other inside of the house, from the outside of the house. Guess what you're going to do? You, you like go in to ring the bell and all of a sudden you hear the house divided against itself. You back up and you go back and get in your car and you leave, don't you? Well, if you come to the house of God and you see it's filled with life and death, listen, man, it's not going to look stable to you. I could hear Lisa yelling at the kids 